Hey guys, sorry speaking uh, here with Earthwalker Primitive. Um, like I said in my uh, update video for this year, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more uh, wild edibles videos and uh, something I've been wanting to try. As many of you know who follow me, you know that I'm a big tea drinker, so I'm always looking for new teas to try. And uh, here's a new tea that I've learned from a, a wild edibles book. And uh, But these are... Uh, violet leaves and we're going to be going over blue violets. I'm actually going to do a video here uh, shortly uh, on uh, violets out in the woods for identification and other uses for it. But uh, the one thing that they make, you can make out of violets, is a, a tea from its leaves. And the leaves are very high in vitamin A and vitamin C. So this tea is actually a very healthy tea for you to drink out in the woods uh, to get some vitamin A and vitamin C in you. And uh, you know we got the leaves here and we dried them out. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut these leaves up. I got my got my pot on, but uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more. Like I said, a lot more wild edible videos because it's one of my weaknesses. And I know it's one of my weaknesses, and I've been lacking on it. So, uh, but um, one thing uh, you definitely want to do, uh, you know, if you're going to go out and start studying wild edibles and learning about it, is buy. You know, don't rely just on what, especially myself, what anybody says online. Um, not saying that what people put online is not true. Not saying that at all. But do not just rely on hearsay and what you Google and, and uh, what people put videos up about. Um, uh, especially for, you know, just watching something and trying to attrit that to your memory and take it out with you. Uh, make sure you buy a good book buy, you know, a, a, a uh, good book, and I know the camera's showing here, so I'll show you a good one. This is one I definitely recommend, is uh, Peterson's Field Guide. Um, they do many different books on edibles, and uh, regional, like this one's for Eastern and Central North America. You know, find an edibles book in your, for your area, because uh, this book does a, a great job of of describing uh, flowers or in edibles and the different uses, how to prepare them. And not only that, it gives you good references to, to look alike, some things that are um, closely resembled to to other edibles that are poisonous. You know, you want you want something in your hand in the field with you until you're hundred percent certain of the identities and recognition of certain edibles. You want to have something in your hand out in the woods. That's what I mean by don't uh, just a trip uh, videos and, and whatnot to memory because somebody might show you something, explain something. And that's one reason why I haven't done many edibles videos is because, you know, just for that sole purpose, you know, to, to, I don't want someone seeing something in a video and saying, oh, I can remember that flower or remember that edible and go out to the woods and, and think they are finding of what was shown to them in a video or what they saw in a video and then make a make a really bad mistake at misidentification and uh, so that's why you know it's important to have a a good resource with you and uh, something that you can use out in the woods in your hand to really uh, identify and there's some bad resources out there some good resources um, so make sure you you know before you buy it look at the book you know, does it give you a really good description? Does it give you a really good identification process? Does it give you good pictures? And then also, does it show you things that are closely resembling to it that are actually poisonous so that way you don't make a mistake? Uh, there are very many look-alike, what they call look-alike uh, um, plants out there that look just like an edible plant. Uh, so I'm still waiting for my tea to boil. I got little steep. Well, I carry loose leaf tea mostly, either loose leaf tea or um, brick tea out in the woods with me, uh, which means, you know, loose leaf meaning it's not in a tea bag. So you can find these little tea steeper balls at almost any store that sells kitchenware. It's just a little steeper bowl. So we're going to try this out. Good dose of vitamin A and vitamin C. Now 
I usually drink my tea with sugar, so I got my sugar bowl ready. Plus, the book does say uh, that violet leaves are pretty bland. So, uh, I'm going to have my sugar ready just in case. Let that steep. Okay, it's been steeping for a while. It's not a very dark tea, and it smells like fresh cut grass on a wet day. without sugar and without sugar it kind of tastes just about what it smells like about a mouthful of grass so we'll put a little sugar in there see if that sweetens up the deal now it tastes like sweet grass <laughs> Anyway, that was an experiment. That was something I never tried before. It's not too bad. I mean, it doesn't replace my tea that I carry with me, but uh, it's definitely uh, something to consider. It's a wild edible, something that's out there. It's a natural resource that's growing and it's free whenever you see it. And it's something you can harvest. And uh, it's definitely uh, something that'll give you vitamin A and vitamin C if you're if you're in need of that. So uh, the book does say that. The leaves are rich in vitamin A and vitamin C, so give it a try. <laughs> uh, make sure you go out, like I said before you try anything, make sure you're able to positively identify anything when it comes to uh, edibles. Um, and, uh, and once you do that, you know, experiment, try things. That's the important thing, um, the important thing about getting a book and actually researching and understanding edibles is for the sole purpose that some edibles um, take for instance an edible with a root. Some things are poisonous when they're raw, but cooking them and processing them reduces the, the, the poison and, or takes them out so it makes it edible. Um, so certain things have certain parts that can, can be eaten and certain parts that can't be eaten. So that's why it's important to actually do your research and, uh, and um, it's definitely something I'm going to be put, spending a lot of time this summer and this season doing because uh, it's something that, you know, I'm lacking in. But uh, this is definitely a, a first for me right here. And, uh, but it's interesting. It's not too bad. With sugar in it, it's not too bad. Give it a try. I'm sorry I'm speaking with a print. Thank you.